I'm a big fan of an Australian composer called Ross Bolliter, and he's a member of what he calls the World Association of Ruined Piano Studies. And what he does is he finds old pianos in Australian sheep shearing sheds that have been in these sheds for years, and they've gone out of tune, or they've somehow become attuned to the Australian atmosphere. And he plays them, and the music sounds discordant, but at the same time, it sounds beautiful, because what it sounds is peculiarly and wonderfully Australian. And it seems to me that's what Les Murray is. Somehow, Les Murray's work, because he's been writing poems for many, many decades, has breathed in the language, the history, but somehow the atmosphere, the topography, the geology, the stories, the history of Australia. Les, as we know, has been writing for many, many, many years until in the end he's writing a poem that couldn't be written by anyone else, that couldn't show any influence apart from, in a sense, his own work. It's again, we talked about breath with Sarah. It's, he's one of those poets who just seems to breathe out a poem. Uh, there's a line in here about growing older, wishing the grab bar of age might be bolted to all civilization. And in the end, there's also an epitaph. I brace for my turn of white collar and my headstone, poet so far. And the idea of being a poet so far is, is written for so long, is taking the idea of a poet so far, so far as far as you can, but also so far a sense of incompleteness. So even at an advanced age, Les Murray is still only gone so far, and we know that it can go further. Sadly, Les can't be with us tonight, but his poem is going to be read by his publisher, Michael Schmidt. Vertigo. Last time I fell in a shower room, I bled like a tumbrel dandy, and the hotel longed to be rid of me. Taken to the town clinic, I described how I tripped on a steel rim and found my head in the wardrobe. Scalp sewn and knotted and flagged, I thanked the Frau Doctor and fled, wishing the grab bar of age might be bolted to all civilization, and thinking of Rome's eighth hill, heaped up out of broken amphorae. When, any time after 60, or any time before, you stumble over two stairs and club your forehead among rake or hoe, brick or fuel tin, that's time to call the purveyor of steel pipe and indoor railings. And soon you'll be gasping up landings having left your balance in the car, from which, please God, you'll never see the launch way of tires off a brink. Later comes the sunny day when street detail gets whitened to mauve, and people hurry you or wait quiet. Les asked me to read two poems in particular. The Care was one of them. Carers are 15 years younger than you, They stop in for your boy. They shower your mother, not looking. They unpeg and bring in the laundry. Carers have learned the bad-smelling jobs and soak them as they chat. Brown pivot stains shame a veteran. Old age is eventually a cat which starts on the brain of its prey. So the words come with a delay and finally hardly at all. Children, years younger again, always knew the nuance of the words, the scratchy pants and the Latin. Grown-ups twist as the modern approaches down gravel, down the flight plan, the airy and the arch, the judgmental in starch, ampoule filled as their hatches open. More friends of mine now face that one, so glory to nurse Cavill, to nurse Kenny, Dr. Flynn and the Sands Frontiersmen, I brace for my turn of white cotton and my headstone, poet so near then, sorry, poet so far then. 
as Ian got it right. A self and dream self. Routines of decaying time fade, and your waking life gets laborious as science. You huddle in, becoming the deathless younger self, who will survive your dreams and vanish in surviving. Dream brings on its story at the pace of drift in twilight, sunless color. Its settings are believed, a library of wood shingles, plain mythic furniture, vivid drone of talk, yet few loves return, trysts seem unkeepable. Urgencies from your time join with the browner suits walking those arcades with you, but then you are apart, aghast, beside the numberless defiling down steep fence into an imminence. As in the ancient burrow, you, small enough to see yourself, survive crucial episodes till you are canceled, and a restart of tense summons your waking size out through shreds of story. The last poem Les wanted me to read was a, a strange little anecdote poem called Child Logic. The smallest girl in the wild kid's gang submitted her finger to his tomahawk idea. It hurt bad, dropping off. He knew he'd gone too far and ran, hurting the others. Later on, he'd maim her brother. She stayed in the bush till sundown, wrote in blood on the logs and gripped her gapped hand, afraid what her family would say to waste of a finger, carelessness. Mad kids. She had done wrong some way. Thank you.